Hello, I'm Mike Gabbard, a candidate for Senate District 20, also known as Tulsi's dad. Uh, mahalo to the Evelyn Neighborhood Board for uh, hosting the forum. Nice to be back in Evelyn, my old stomping grounds. Some of you may remember I was a city councilman here from 2003 to 2005. We used to live on Evelyn Beach Road, and then we moved over to uh, Pohakapuna Road. Currently, I'm the senator for District 19, which goes from uh, Waikele to Colina, and I've represented the district for the last six years. Now, some of you may be scratching your head saying, what's Gabbard doing here? I thought a sparrow was my senator. Well, every 10 years after the census is taken, because of the shifting populations, reapportionment happens. And so my district, 19, has changed to District 20, effective November 7th. That would be next month. District 20 includes Kapole, Makakilo, portions of Kalailoa, Waipahu, and Eba. And specifically in Eba, all of West Block, Verona Village, and parts of Eba Villages, that would be from the homes between Kapole Parkway and Park Road, including the homes that are on the Malka side of Park Road. Folks, this election is about you hiring someone to be your voice in the legislature. You, the voter, are the employer. I'm your current employee. I've been trying my best uh, representing West Oahu for the last six years in the Senate as my employer. You have to decide whether you want to keep me on as an employee or fire me. In order to make that informed decision, you're doing a job interview, and that's what this forum is tonight. We are potential employees of yours. We will speak and answer your questions. You'll go home and check out our resumes on our websites, etc., and then make a decision. And by the way, uh, you'll get a couple flyers in the mail. Some of you may have already gotten this one in the mail. And there's a survey in there I'd like you to fill out. And you can either do it online or you can mail this back to me. I'm interested in finding out what issues are important to you. And once we find out what those issues are, to continue the conversation and hopefully solve those problems. I look forward to the opportunity to share my thoughts about issues facing Eva this evening. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm uh, Dean Kalani Kepaludo. I know I've got a difficult last name. Thank you for taking time out to uh, be here. I'm not here to represent any politi political party, no special interests or developers, or any particular campaign donor. If you are human, if you, if you have any sense of doing what's right for our community, I'm humbly asking for your vote on November 6th. You know, my, my opponent is, just sends out this, this flyer. He's been in office for six years, and now he's asking us where we, where we are on these issues. Where have you been, sir? I, I wouldn't even be here if I didn't feel that you were incompetent in your position. And I can just start on the issues. We're going to start right on them. Act 55, Public Land Development Corporation. That's the first one. It violates every principle of democracy, sir. Representative government, consent of the governed, uh, individual rights, uh, uh, checks and balances, the bio lab. Where have you been, sir? Where have you been on the bio lab? I've been out there. Uh, Dave, this is an introduction of yourself. Yes. Okay. This, this is an introduction. This is, this is how it's going to go from the beginning to the end. You got too many introductions. How, much, how much time? Have you have you how got, much time? Right how now, you got 30 seconds left. Okay, sir. Whole Peely. Where, where were you at on Whole Peely? The EVA, develop, EVA development plan last night that we got deferred. The whole Peely. It's the most productive, that's the pr most productive uh, farmland we have in the state. And you stood by while all the other communities dumped on us. The bio lab, that's another dump on us, sir. UH oversight. The Senate is, is responsible for uh, confirming those people there and that's doing in oversight, minutes, sir. That's in okay. two minutes. Aloha, thank you. Basically. If elected, what do you intend to do about the bio lab? I'm closely monitoring the uh, Pacific Health Research Lab. You know, one of the problems that we have here is that someone has, let's say, a case of dengue fever, then they've got to, we've got to send the blood work to Colorado as the closest place. Sometimes that can take three days to three weeks. I, too, am very uh, disappointed in the efforts by UH to reach out to the community. I agree with the Kapole uh, Makakila Neighborhood Board. They voted in a reso to, uh, against the project at this point. I am on record uh, in terms of the environmental assessment process. 
My comments are there uh, basically that because of the poor outreach by UH, uh, until that changes, uh, I will remain opposed to that. Uh, they really need to do their work to reach out to the community and let everybody know what's exactly at stake here. So there's some very good parts about this, but we can't make an informed decision as a community until they do the work of community outreach. One minute. Okay. With with the bio lab from day one, I I've been opposed to it and uh, very vocal about it. While my my opponent has uh, known about it for at least six months prior to the rest of the community. Um, you know, this is not you know play. I've got a secret. You know, when you find out that you're going to have something that's going to affect your community, as a leader. You're supposed to get out there and let people know what's going on. Uh, you know, we shouldn't... What actually happened is uh, they came out and told us, oh, we, we notified the community. And that was a big lie. Because we went to 800 homes, knocking door to door. And they had lied to us. There was one person who knew about the bio lab, and he was a, a lab tech. So you've got to ask yourself, what kind of leader do you want in your Senate? You want somebody who's going to be hiding for six months... Or do you want somebody that's going to step up and let the community know what's going on so that we can actually come together and say, you know what, uh, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, get it out. I'm opposed to it. Thanks, Dean. Just one minute. What is your position on Act 55 and the PLDC? Senator Gabbard, one uh, minute. The basic purpose of, of Act 55, uh, PLDC, is to facilitate the development of public lands. As the chair of the Energy and Environment Committee, I I voted in favor of it basically to help spur the development and expansion of geothermal energy. Um, as of right now, as Rep. Pine mentioned in the meeting today, basically they are trying to come up with the administrative rules. Uh, if the administrative rules that they're coming up with, that they will put forth tomorrow, uh, if it needs amendments, then we can take a look at it this next legislative session. There's a lot of kind of um, hysteria out there that this is going to, it's a done deal. The fact of the matter is it's not a done deal. Uh, amendments can be made. Uh, another point is that uh, Chapter 343, the environmental uh, laws, are you must follow the, the Chapter 343 in there. Uh, and so again, it's just going to take some time. Let's see what the, uh, the results of that meeting were today, see what about their administrative rules. And if they're not, if it does, if it does not make sure that the cultural resources and environmental uh, resources are kept safe, then we can amend it this next legislative session. Thanks, Senator Governor. Uh, Dean, one minute. Okay, um, my problem with Act 55, and it really bothers me, is uh, uh, across the board, the legislature passed this, and uh, and only one representative, I think, stood up and said no. Um, the, the problem with this is uh, consent of the governor. You, know, you talk about democracy. They, they violated every principle of democracy when they passed this. Consent of the governor. Hawaiian sovereignty groups do not recognize the state and federal uh, authority over the lands. Representative government. Uh, our neighbor islands are not represented on that board. The rule of laws. These guys that are on this board can override some of the environmental laws. Individual rights, property, uh, people's property uh, rights are being violated, and there's no anything in the administrative rules to mediate that. And then checks and balances. These guys that are on this board can can uh, do backroom deals. This is like pay to play, no bid contracts. That's one minute. It's just incompetence in our legislature. Aloha. How do you practice Malama Aina? And does this influence your decision making? Senator Gabbard. You want a yes no answer on that? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> how do you practice it? Well, yes. Do you practice? Yeah, do you practice? And then basically give us yes, one, you know, a, a quick one. So. Okay. Yes, small mind, taking care of the, uh, the, the earth, the land. Uh, number one, I have a nonprofit called Healthy Hawaii Coalition. We have been. Uh, trying to protect the island for many, many years. My daughter, Tulsi, and I co-founded it. We do uh, watershed education in all the public schools, the free public service that we do. Uh, and also, I'm very aware, very much aware of Malama Aina and being the chair of the Energy Environment Committee. While we are very excited about uh, 
um, utilizing more renewable energy. We must always, always be careful that we that it is that precious ina that we are protecting. Thank you, Senator Governor. Just so everyone, that, let me re ask it there. I kind of got confused with another question we're looking at. How do you practice Malama Aina? Does this practice influence your decision making? So, yes, take the phone. Okay. Uh, aloha. I'm uh, Dean Kalani Capaluto, and uh, I'm part Hawaiian, so I have, it's in my blood to uh, take care of the land. Um, I, uh, I do a little bit of hydroponics on the side, and I, uh, I uh, grow uh, tilapia. Um, and uh, one of the things I'm uh, pushing for is the uh, GMO labeling and uh, trying to get rid of, uh, you know, it's controversial, the issue of GMOs, but uh, I am definitely uh, in favor of them labeling GMOs. And we got to look closely at uh, what they are doing up in Cunea as far as poisoning our, uh, our farmland. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Can you stop the city from placing a bus stop and shelter in front of or near the front door? If you need to have it removed, can they trust on you to work with towards that? And also, can you have it removed? If not, why not? This is actually a personal situation that's come up in the board for one of our community members. So I wanted to, everybody wants to know how you would answer that. So once again, the question is, can you stop the city from placing a bus stop or shelter in front of their front door. If you need to have it removed, can you support them on that? And then also, can you have it removed? If you cannot, why not? <coughs> well, that's a difficult question because I'm having I have a hard time understanding it, to be honest with you. Um, but I believe that uh, if there's a bus stop sitting right in front of somebody's house and they're they're not able to sleep at night or you know or, or losing sleep because it's too close or there's a noise issue, then uh, yeah, we need to figure out a way to, to move the bus stop to a, uh, a better location because, uh, you know, this is all about uh, respecting people's individual rights. Hold on. I'd like to have the remarks of uh, Bob Dermot in the record. Bob's been there, we all know this. Constituent concerns, you do the best that you can. I think that what people really appreciate, they see that you are actually trying your best to help them. There may be some merit, there may be not any merit. Uh, because I served on the city council for two years, I still have a lot of relationships with department uh, agencies and the people that still work over there. So when we get a city quote unquote issue, we call them up over there, we try to get all the facts that we can, and just try to do the best that you can. This is for the elected officials and those. Okay. It'll be a little bit differently for those who are looking to seek the position. Since being in office, what have you done to fix our parks? And for those seeking office, what will you do to fix our parks? We'll begin, Senator Gabbard. Well, as far as the parks issue, um, you know, when folks are using the parks, they really don't know or care whether it's a county or a state park, a city or a state park. They just want the shower heads to work or whatever. And that's where you guys come in. Uh, we take every phone call, email, snail mail very seriously as far as the follow-up. And But if we don't hear, and this is, you know, my opponent was kind of attacking me for sending out a questionnaire. I mean, I need to hear from you what the issues that are important to you. If it's parks, if it's, you know, whatever, you need to let me know so we can act on what those concerns are. Obviously, one of the things that's in the news right now, they're locking up the bathrooms at, uh, down in uh, uh, Waikiki, and, and tourists are, are like freaking out, but how do you solve that problem? And again, the whole thing is collaboration and working together calmly and trying to come to a good solution that's going to benefit not only the local community, but also the tourism, for the tourists who come here. Thanks, Senator. Dean? Hello. Uh, I am uh, lucky to uh, have grown up and uh, uh, from sun up to sundown when I was uh, a kid, uh, I spent the majority of my time in parks. And I'm sad to see that uh, my children don't have the same opportunity that I had. And you see the youth of today, and uh, you know they don't have that same opportunity to go out and, and play ball all day and, and, and get into shape. So um, my problem with some of the parks is uh, uh, nobody wants to go into a restroom that doesn't have uh, toilet paper or soap 
that's just uh, unacceptable. And then, uh, you know, no paper or for your hands. But uh, I'd love to have more parks, but at the same time, we have to have the money to support them. If we can't maintain it, then we sh probably shouldn't build it. At the same time, if we get new construction projects here that build homes, they, we, need to, we need to make sure they put parks in and put the schools in and the infrastructure in first before they add uh, new uh, homes. Thank you. This was brought up a little bit by earlier when Adam started it for the other question we had about the parks. Share your thoughts on the homeless problem here in Eva. Possible causes, think it's self-induced for economics and what you can do about them. We'll begin with Rita. Senator Gabbard. When I was on city council representing District 1, there were 1,700 homeless on the Waianae Coast, 400 of those were kids. And Bob is right, we're not going to solve this one overnight. One of the best things that's happening right now, though, is, and he alluded to it as well, and that is a partnership between churches and government. You have a, a, a <coughs> Korean church out there on the Waianae Coast who bought some land. They're actually making that available to farm that land for homeless people that want to come there and actually work and get paid. And so I think if more of the faith-based communities step up to the plate to help address this problem, working with government as far as human services, we can really do something very productive on this issue. Thanks, Senator. Dean? Well, it's one thing to talk about helping the homeless, and it's another thing to actually uh, have some action uh, and not just a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, for about the last four or five years, uh, uh, our family's been involved in something called anti Lynn's uh, Slipper Project, which we go out to Waianae, and we go down all the beaches and hand out food and clothing, and uh, we visit the shelters. And I tell you what, it's a humbling experience. Anybody who's ever been out there is, would totally be shocked. Uh, you've got you know, children out there, and you're like, I cannot believe these kids are running around out there barefoot. You know, you know some of them don't even have clothes. But um, anyway, the, the shelters are not the only answer because the shelters are not at full capacity. So, you know, just saying that just throw shelters at is not, not the solution. And um, I think we need to handle the, the homeless on a case-by-case -case basis. So you, you really have to get out there in the field and uh, talk to them. And uh, some of these folks that are out there on the beach are Hawaiian sovereignty folks. You know, they just want to live in peace on the land that they think is their own. So. Uh, other than that, do I have any more time? Thank you, Dean. Okay. If elected, what can you do for funding for our kapuna? What can you do for funding for our kapuna? Senator Gabbard? On the uh, pension tax, I sit on the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, and going back to what I was saying earlier, when we had the hearings, there were uh, standing room only kapuna who showed up to testify, and it really made a difference, and that's why we were able to stop that as far as convincing the members of the committee that it was not good to move forward. So I also am uh, very supportive of the Kapuna Caucus that is uh, led by our, one of our senators, uh, Brickwood Gallateria from Waikiki. Uh, I don't feel like it, you know, the meals on wheels, the different programs serving our Kapuna, just, we, we should never be cutting back on these very important programs. Thanks, Senator. Dean? Aloha. Our society is judged by our ability to take care of the uh, KP, the Kapuna, and those that are sick. I think uh, the families that work uh, two to three jobs, and uh, they're also having to take care of uh, someone that's sick. And uh, you know what? Our, I think our society right now, our community is at a breaking point, many of us. Um, and uh, so I wouldn't add anything uh, additional to what we're already carrying. The load is already there. We we're already stretched to the limit. Um, so, and our Kapuna, they just want to live with dignity, and uh, you know, and we need to learn from them. I mean, they're there. You know, we're supposed to listen to what they have to say. So, um, I would uh, support anything that um, uh, supports our Kapuna and uh, allows them to live uh, live out uh, the rest of their their lives um, in dignity. Hello. Will you or will you not? Support retirement or a, a tax economy proposals to tax retirement or raise, raise revenue in order to raise revenue. It's a yes or no. So just, just ask a couple times. I want to make sure the community understands where you stand on this issue. 
Yes or no? Starting with Bob. Senator Gabbard? No. Dean, you're elected. We get one minute? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you take one minute to say yes? Or no? Then that could be an issue. But. Uh, I wouldn't uh, support any uh, raises or taxes. Okay. I think I think we're we're at the point of the breaking point right now, and you know what? Uh, I think our current politicians, our current politicians, are addicted to our taxes. Okay. You know? Adam, Hello. Do you favor having a con con, and do you favor having term limits for us? Dean. Okay, I uh, support the uh, the uh, con con, and uh, primarily because. Uh, in the uh, primary election, I have a problem with the way that uh, our state has it set up so that we have to choose a political party first instead of the best candidate. Uh, I think that's wrong. And uh, as far as the uh, term limits, I support that 100%. Okay. Senator Gabbard? I support a con con. I think it's always good when democracy for people to have an opportunity to take a look. Uh, we haven't had one for a while. As far as term limits, I've always found it very interesting that the legislature passed term limits for county offices, for the governor, but somehow forgot to put term limits on themselves. So I would go on. We also want to go with term limits. This would basically be a quick one. Do you support? And if you have a thought about how you could possibly do it, you can mention that one. As a public servant, would you push for more ADA compliance, like handicapped, physically challenged, like in swings, jungle gyms, beaches, parks area? Would you be able to support that? as an elected official. Okay. Dean? Uh, I would uh, support uh, any uh, uh, ADA compliant uh, issues and uh, I think it follows the, uh, the democratic principle of uh, rule of law. If you have uh, a, a law that's on the books and it's our responsibility to uh, follow it until that law is changed. Senator Gabbard? Yes, I would support. Uh, I would make sure that the research was done to make sure that all the grants from the federal government are being taken advantage of, number one. And number two, I would reach out to the to the corporate community and ask for contributions to, to make it a state-private partnership. Earlier, during the, we were talking about the homeless problem. The term affordable housing was brought up. What is your truly de true definition of affordable housing? Yeah, when it comes to affordable housing, uh, I, I, I look back and think about uh, my first home. Uh, we couldn't afford a, a single family home, so we ended up uh, moving into a condo, like a townhouse, and it's a starter home. And uh, I just don't think we have enough of those type of dwellings. But, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to push out 88,000 more homes on the other plane, and when we've got 28,000 vacancies. So we got, we got some issues that we need to address as far as uh, city and state planning for where we want to go with uh, with housing, and uh, as far as the definition of where the where the line is, you know, you're going to get different opinions no matter uh, uh, what. You know, everybody's going to have their own definition of what affordable housing is. That's a subjective question. Senator Gabbard, my understanding as far as new projects is that a certain percentage of the homes have to be uh, affordable housing. So I would make it a point that a lot of times the developers were not holding their feet to the fire and I think we need to do that more. What is your input about renewable energy? Aloha. I'm uh, generally in favor of uh, renewables but not at the expense of uh, uh, tax scams uh, that uh, the state is reporting right now. And uh, I'm not going to make any uh, uh, try to appear to be uh, more knowledgeable in this area than my opponent, which is the uh, chair of the Energy Committee. Uh, and uh, But uh, I do hold them accountable for uh, uh, pushing through the uh, cable bill and the, uh, the windmills uh, when Molokai and Lanai, 80 to 90 percent of that population said they didn't want it, and my opponent pushed it through on the Senate floor. That, that's not listening to the community, that's ramming through legislation. So, uh, other than that, uh, that's it. Hello. Thank you. Senator Gabbard. First of all, the cable bill that was passed uh, simply sets up the framework for the PUC to, to regulate this, the cable if it's ever built. It does not say which island, it does not say what kind of energy. Secondly, as the chair of the Energy Environment Committee, we're spending four to six billion dollars 
every year importing over 40 million barrels of oil. The reason this is stupid is because we have world-class sun, world-class wind, we have an active volcano on the, on the Big Island, we have wave energy and ocean thermal energy. We should be tapping into these natural resources and keeping that money home here in Hawaii to help our economy. What do you think needs to happen in government level, on government level, to impair, improve, improve education in Hawaii? We'll begin with Senator Gavin. Or Steen. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Steen. Oh, Okay, uh, with the, uh, our education issues, uh, my opinion is that uh, the uh, Hawaii Department of Education is uh, top heavy. We had a teacher stand up and, and say that uh, for every teacher in the classroom, we have uh, one administrator. And I don't know how many years we've been asking for an audit of uh, the DOE, the Department of uh, Education, and uh, that hasn't happened. Um, so uh, I think uh, getting more teachers into the classroom and reducing the, uh, uh, the uh, student to teacher ratio uh, would allow our students to have more personal one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one time with the teachers and instructors. And I think that would uh, re uh, result in a better quality education uh, for our KD. Thank you. Senator Gabbard. As a former high school teacher and college administrator and the husband of a wife who was on the State Board of Education, we got to do something. And I think one of the things that we need to do to get up from the bottom of where we are is tapping into online resources uh, such as Khan's Academy and, and this concept of flipping in a classroom where we our kids are into their high-tech stuff. And so there are all these lessons that are out there where they could be doing that work at home on their computers coming in and kind of like college class and having these discussions in class. It's a whole different concept that I think that uh, we should be looking at. Um, we're, it's in bad shape now, it continues to be in bad shape, and I would also agree with my opponent that it's time to do an audit of the Department of Education to find out exactly where we are, how that money is actually being spent. What is one of the benefits that you've either done for EBA, the EBA community, because this is the members here, or plan to do just the top thing, Please include those in your closing remarks. I'll give you a few extra seconds to do it as well. So you have two minutes and ten seconds. Our picture. Aloha. I'm uh, Dean Kalani Capilouto, and uh, I'm a 22-year Navy vet, a small business owner, part Hawaiian Italian, and uh, we've, I've got a master's in information systems, uh, and I'm uh, ready and willing to lead and humbly ask for your support on November 6th. Um, on November 7th, though, all of us are going to have to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, hey, did we do the right thing for our community? And uh, I just want to point out that, you know, 30 days prior to an election is not the right time to send out a survey asking where your community is at on the issues. He's had six years. Six years. You know, and uh, if, you want, uh, if you want somebody that's going to be outspoken and uh, fight for uh, uh, stopping, dumping all the... the, the Projects in, in our district, in, in Evan, uh, in Kalaloa, in Kapolei, you, you're going to want to support me and Tom Bird. If you want somebody that's uh, going to stand up against the BioLab, you're, you're going to want to support me. If you're tired of uh, them uh, exploiting our uh, prime ag lands, you're going to want to vote for me. If you believe that small businesses are the economic engine of our uh, country, then you're going to want to vote for me. My opponent was... Uh, uh, rated the very last, uh, rated last in the state for supporting uh, small businesses, and that, that says something. And um, again, this election is not about me, whether or not I win or, or lose, but it's about holding our elected officials accountable, whether or not you think they fail or they were they affected, and that's subjective. And that's the reason I'm here, is I'm holding our uh, elected officials accountable. Hello. Senator Gabbard. Okay, mahalo once again to the uh, board for uh, including me in the forum tonight. I'm not going to waste my time as far as uh, defending myself. You can go to my website, do a comparison between the both of us to see our qualifications. As far as the EVA issue, I was when I was on the city council, I was a part of the, I headed up the EVA Transportation Coalition, and we were very uh, significant in getting the. Uh, 
Fort Weaver uh, widened as well as Corn Creek Parkway, keeping that in, the, in, our, in our vision there. I was also uh, $68 million. I worked with Senator Sparrow, and that went to Eva Mackay Middle School, Camula L, Eva Beach Elementary, Eva Elementary, as well as Campbell High School. I'm not going to use my closing remarks to toot my horn and tell you what a great guy I am. As I said earlier, you are the employer. So you get to check my qualifications and accomplishments on my website at mikegabbard.com. But I will leave you with this. There are lots of exciting things that are happening out here on the west side. And the biggest highlight of my time so far in the Senate has been working with my colleagues to help with the funding of UH West Oahu. Many of you don't realize that it was in 1966 when the legislature appropriated $300,000 for planning. 46 years later, on August 20th, classes began, and believe me, we're looking at a first-class institution that is the pride and joy of West Oahu. UH West Oahu is huge for our community because it brings higher education opportunities, needed jobs, and also it relieves our traffic congestion. So think about this. Now that the campus is open, if you live on the west side, whether it's West Oahu, North Shore, Waianae, Central, even Pearl City and Aiea, you don't have to get on UH, you don't have to get on H1 to go into UH Manoa, right? So, uh, and spend all that time in traffic. Meanwhile, at the legislature, I completed my fourth year as the chair of the E&E committee. Rep. Cabanilla is correct. When some people, you folks, are paying $400 a month for your electric bill, and somebody who has a PD system is paying $18 a month, there's something wrong. Uh, we can do better than that. And finally, my promise to you is that if you keep me on the job and re-elect me, you will always have access to me. Whether you come to my office, or you uh, come to one of my monthly Saturday meetings, or by phone, email, or snail mail, I will always respond and help you the best I can. My staff does not know what a time card is, so I'm humbly asking for your support. Thank you, Senator